sharing good news of great joy to all people. Elation Church. Welcome to Elation Church. We're excited that you're joining in with us this week for worship. And if you're watching from across Four Corners, Florida, we invite you to come out and be with us every Sunday morning in the gymnasium of Citrus Ridge Academy. Citrus Ridge Academy is just off of Highway 27 on Sand Mine Road, and we look forward to meeting you there. Each week when we begin our online service, we start out by singing a song, and I want you to join in with us as we sing about the goodness of our God and His great love for us. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for your great love. We thank you for your goodness. God, we thank you for the life that you give us, the hope that you give us, the joy that you give us, the peace that you give us. And now as we take this time to look into your word, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and that we would receive your truth with joy today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, from all of us here at Elation Church, we would like to wish you a happy new year. Can you believe that 2023 is already here? I mean, it seems like just yesterday we were just beginning 2022. And you know what? Every time the year ends and a new year begins, I always like to have a time of reflection. I always like to remember the things that happened in the previous year. Sometimes as we reflect, we reflect on some of the bad things that happened during the past year. Sometimes we reflect on the good things that happened, but it's always a time of reflection. We've had some great times here at Elation Church. I mean, over the past year, our attendance has more than doubled our, our regular attendance each Sunday. We've had some events. We've had some concerts by some great musicians and 
It's just been a, a really great year here at Elation Church. Now, I don't know what you have experienced. And when you think about reflecting, if you think on good things or bad things, hopefully there wasn't too many bad things that happened last year for you to reflect on. And you can remember the goodness of God in your life and the, and the things that He has done. Well, today we're going to talk about reflecting and we're going to talk about um, resolutions. So I've entitled this message Reflections and Resolutions because we have a time of reflection, but then we also look forward into the coming year and we make some promises to ourselves to do things a little bit differently than we did last year. Now, I want to call your attention today to some verses out of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, we're going to be looking at verses 3 through 9 today where Paul is talking and he says, look, we rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. And then he goes on to say, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. So. Paul is spending a little bit of time reflecting, not necessarily on the previous year, but he's spending some time reflecting on his life up until this point. Because there were some teachers in the church at Philippi, and they were bragging about the things they've done. And then Paul's saying, look, if anybody has the right to brag on their heritage and what they've done, yeah, I could brag on that and I would be better at it than them. I have, I have more things going on for me than these teachers that are trying to tell you that I'm not really a great teacher and they shouldn't be listening to me. See, Paul is reflecting. He was born into a religious family. He was born a Jew and born in, I mean, he's a Hebrew of Hebrews, he said. He was a very religious man. He was a Pharisee. And every time I talk about Pharisees, I like to remind the people watching that Pharisees were very religious and very dedicated. I mean, to be a Pharisee, you had to memorize word for word the first five chapters of the Bible. Many of us couldn't get past the first few verses of Genesis in the beginning. You know, we, we can go a little bit, but he memorized the first five books of the Bible. I want you to think about memorizing Leviticus. I mean, that's one of the first five books. See, he was a very religious man. And as a matter of fact, as far as Pharisees go, in other texts, we find out that he was a Pharisee of Pharisee. He went to the best Pharisee school and studied under the best Pharisee teacher, Gamaliel. So, I mean, he ranked very high when it came to religious people in his day and time. So he was born in a religious family. He was a very religious man. He was passionate about what he believed. Some people think that Paul was a bad guy because he was persecuting Christians and going out to arrest them. But see, this was against his faith, what he believed. He didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah at this point. He thought he was working for God to stomp out some cult that had rose up. I mean, he, he was very passionate, very passionate working for God, serving God. And then he goes on to say, when it comes to the law, when it comes to the Jewish law and all the rules, I mean, I was obeying that without fault, he said. So that tells us that he was making some very good choices, very good life decisions, very good choices. So when Paul looked back over his life and he's comparing himself with all the other people, all the other Jews, all the other Pharisees, he can say this. He said, well, if anybody can brag, 
I should be able to brag. I should have confidence in my efforts, in, in my ability to keep the rules, in my ability to memorize scripture, in my ability to do what needs to be done, my passion, my zeal. I mean, nobody exhibited more of that than I did. So as he looks back on his life before Christ, he could have a lot of things to be proud about, a lot of things to brag about as he reflected back. But then he goes on to say in verse 7, he says, I once thought these things were valuable. See, he's saying, I used to think this is what's important. Being from a religious family, being very religious, being very passionate, making good choices, keeping the rules, studying. I, I used to think that that was what was important. He says, I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. See, he said, if anybody could brag, I could brag, but <laughs> none of us have reason to boast about what we've accomplished or what we've done if it's been in the flesh, even if it's religious things, right? We don't, we don't have the ability or the... We can't say, wow, I'm confident in what I've done and I'm, I've got, I'm great. Everything's good. I'm good. This is, yeah, I'm, I'm exactly where I need to be and I, there's nothing I need to work on, nothing I need to grow on. No, we don't ever get to that point. And then Paul is going to go on in Philippians 3. He's going to, he's going to go on from here as he took a time of reflection, took a time of looking back over his life now he's going to tell us what's most important, and we can call that a resolution. So he reflected, and then now he's going to focus on what's most important. Now, some of us make resolutions when the new year comes, because when we reflect and we look back, it's like, well, we should have done this more. We should have done this more. Maybe we need to do this in the year that's coming up. So we make resolutions. Well, I looked up the top 10 resolutions, and I'd like to share those with you. The first one is, a lot of people in 2023, they're going to want to exercise more. Seems like that's a common goal. We always want to get a little bit more exercise, right? A lot of people want to lose some weight. A lot of people want to get organized. They look in the closets and cabinets, and they're like, wow. I need to be more organized. A lot of people want to learn a new skill or a new hobby. They want to work on that. Some people look back at their life last year and say, you know what, I'd, I was just going through the motions and it's like I was in a rut and stuck in a rut. I just want to live life to the fullest this coming year. I mean, I want to, I want to do more and not just be stuck in the day-to-day -day routine. Some people look at their bank account <laughs> and they say, well, you know, I see what I need to do next year. I need to save more money. I need to spend less money on things that aren't really important. Some people want to quit a bad habit, something that's dangerous to their health, maybe like smoking. They want to, they want to quit this bad habit. Some people look at their life last year as they reflect and then they look at the coming year and they're like, you know what? I didn't get to spend much time with my family or my friends. I was too busy doing other things. And my resolution for this coming year is to spend more time with my family and my friends. Some people look back on the year and say, you know what? I didn't even get to take a vacation. I, I need to travel more, you know? So their resolution is that they're going to travel more. And then some people say, well, you know, I, you, I really enjoy reading, and I was, I was just so sidetracked and so busy last year, I didn't get to read very much. And my resolution is to read more over the coming year. Now, like I said, those are the top 10 resolutions that most people make, and there may be a few of those that I named out that you're like, yeah, I need to do that more, do that next year. And you, you might say, yeah, that's some of my resolutions, but... When we look at what Paul wrote after he reflected on his entire life, and then now he's coming to the point where 
there's only a couple of things that are really vital and really important. And I would like to submit to you that I think these are Paul's resolutions after he reflects on his life. Now he's going to give us two very important resolutions. In Philippians 3 verse 8 and 9 is where I find what I would call these resolutions. He says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. So that's one of his resolutions. This is, this is of infinite value, he says. If, if I'm going to spend time, I need to spend time doing this, and that is knowing Jesus. I want to know Jesus more. And verse 8 continues, it says, For his sake, for Jesus' sake, I've discarded everything else. All those things that I used to think were important, I've, I've discarded those things. And you know what? I count all those things as garbage, he says so that I could gain Christ and become one with Him. So, I would like to present to you that Paul's resolution is twofold. One is to, to know Jesus. The other is to become one with Jesus. His resolutions are knowing Christ and becoming one with Christ. Now, you could sit back and say, well, <laughs> I've got that down. Hey, hey, Dean, I've got that down. I know Jesus. I know Jesus as Lord. I'm a Christian. So I came into a relationship with Jesus. And you know what? When I come into a relationship with Jesus, I am now one with Jesus. I'm now unified with him and I'm part of his family and part of the body of Christ. So I'm good. If, if that's the most important thing, I've done those two most important things. Those things have happened in my life. So Dean, look, I am good. Whew. I'm good. So obviously you're not talking to me today. Well, <laughs> I, I came across this cartoon strip and it was talking about reflecting and, and resolutions. And one character is saying to the other one, resolutions? Me? Just what are you implying? that I need to change? Well, buddy, as far as I'm concerned, I am perfect the way I am. <laughs> now, we never need to get to that point spiritually. You know what? It's <laughs> knowing and becoming, those are, those are relationship words. Now, Gain and I have been married at the, at the time of today, you know, right at the beginning of the year of 2023, we've been married 38 years. So we've known each other a long time. And when we said our wedding vows, they, they read the verses that the, that the two become one. And I don't know if they, I don't know if you've heard that in a wedding ceremony or not, but the, the two become one when they're married and we've known each other a long time. As a matter of fact, we knew each other the year before we were married. So we've known each other almost 39 years at this point. But you know what? We are still in the process of knowing each other. We are still in the process of becoming one. See, it happened when we got married. It happened when we met. We began to know each other and we began we became one when we were married, but there's a process because relationships are living things. They're moving things. And when Paul is talking about knowing Christ Jesus, his Lord, you see, the more time you spend with someone, the more you know them. The more time you spend with someone, the more you become alike or become one. We can see that in our natural relationships, right? The more we spend time with a person, you know what happens? We begin to think like that person. We, there are friends that we spend the most time with and our spouses, we begin to think alike. We begin to talk alike. I don't know if you notice that when groups of friends are together, they, they have like their own dialect. They have their own words and they talk alike. They, 
They use the same words. And if, if you don't know them and if you're not becoming one with them in a relationship and the relationship's not moving forward, it gets kind of awkward when people use different words. It, it shows the level of friendship. I mean, all you have to do is look at children when they're in school and you can find out who they hang out with because they start talking alike, right? And as you spend time, I've, I've often thought of this. We used to have a couch that the fabric on the couch had little dimples in it. It wasn't just smooth fabric. And I can't tell you how many times that I would fall asleep laying on that couch with my head on one of the pillows. And you know what? Because I spent a lot of time with my face pressed against that fabric, when I got up and looked in the mirror, those spots from that fabric have been imprinted into my face because I spent so much time with that fabric during my nap. Here's the deal. I want to invite you to join me in letting these two spiritual principles being a resolution that you make for 2023, that you would know Christ, that you would be in the process of knowing Him and growing in this relationship of becoming one with Him. You see, because the more time we spend with Christ this year, the more we're going to think like Jesus, the more we're going to talk like Jesus, the more we're going to love the things that Jesus loves. Hello? That's what it means to be in, a continu in the continual process of knowing Christ and becoming one with Christ. I want to leave you this week with a very thought-provoking um, little scenario. Now, I don't want you to be this person, but I want you to consider what this says because we can look at our faith like this. I just want a little bit of Jesus, not a whole lot. As a matter of fact, I would like to buy about $3 worth of God. Not too much. Just enough to make me happy. But not so much that my family and friends would notice a difference. See, I don't want so much of God that it makes me hate my selfishness and hate my lust. I certainly don't want so much of God that I start to love the people that I really don't like. Or if I get to the point of where I would consider going on a mission trip, no, I don't want that much of God. I want fun, not repentance. I want to enjoy life, not to be transformed or changed. I, I want to be liked by all the nice, forgiving, open-minded people. I would like just enough of God to make it to heaven, but not so much of God that my plans or personal goals are impacted, or so much that it actually costs me something. Just $3 worth of God, please. That's all I want. See. We don't need to be like that because I'm telling you, I, I just really encourage you to want to know God more in 2023. I want, you, I want to encourage you to desire to become more like God, becoming one with Him, knowing Him, and allow your relationship not just to cut off at the beginning, where you're at a point where, you know, I'm going to heaven and I don't want God to mess with any other parts of my life. Let's go beyond that and let's experience the goodness of our God. Let's experience the life of God. Let's experience the peace of God that surpasses understanding. Let's let the joy of the Lord be our strength. Let's let the word of God be on our lips. And let's experience the life that God has for us instead of settling for just what this fallen, broken world has to offer, because God has so much more for you and for me. And we will discover that when we're in a growing relationship of knowing Him more and becoming one with Him on a daily basis. 
in the process. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your word. And God, I pray that this year, this new year, that we would put more emphasis in our lives of spending more time with you and knowing you more and becoming more like you in our thoughts and in our words and in our actions. As we live in this world, loving you with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and loving everyone around us with your compassion and your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining with us here at Elation Church, and thanks for being a part of our Elation family. If today's message was an encouragement to you, would you consider sharing it with all of your social media friends? All you have to do is hit that share button right under the video. In doing that, you'll be coming alongside of us in our mission of bringing good news of great joy to all people. We'll see you right back here next week at Elation Church. This online worship experience was brought to you by the friends and partners of Elation Church.